going to record this. I just want to share my, my screen. I just want to say hello to everybody. And uh, I hope that you are going to enjoy this, um, this few minutes with, with us. Um, I'm, I'm going to just want to share my screen with everybody. So there we are. Um, you will see that, um, that Eileen, Eileen Blom, uh, is also from my office, so she will be handling all the um, all the questions, and she will give it to me at, at the end of the the webinar, and then we will we will discuss it. Uh, this is recorded, so we will also place it on either YouTube or we will place it on our, our website um, in the next week or so. And if you want to have it, we can send it to you. So the bow tie, the bow tie is a fantastic risk assessment technolo um, technology and methodology that we've been using, we have been using actually myself and Elian since about 2007 um, with our exposure to the Gau train. And here we are having our, the webinar guidelines. So firstly, please mute your microphone. Um, let, let me uh, for this 40 minutes or 50 minutes have the floor and please um, keep your, your questions to the last. Um, there's a chat box um, on um, your, I think, on, on um, the Zoom bar. Um, so please, if you have got any, any questions, type it in the Niku, we can't hear you. Nothing. We have lost you on your sound. Yeah. Yay. Oh, next me. <laughs> oh, I can hear you. Does I? Yeah. Ah, okay. So the Bluetooth Does I? works. Okay. Okay. So this is having backup on backup on backup. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Leanne. Okay. So um, I'm I am going to address. Um, I was on that that page there. So please, if you have if you have any challenges with um, uh, or questions, please ask it in the chat box. And then uh, we will re we are recording it, so we will send it out to you as well. So the table of contents. I'm just going to address three things then. We specify the Africa, um, what is isolytics, and then isolytics and the bow tie. And then we've got questions at the the last section there. Okay, who is Chris advising Africa? Firstly, I just want to explain to you that Chris advising Africa has been established in two thousand in June two thousand and fourteen. Um, so we are now six years old, and we are glad to have been doing business with, with some of you or all of you, and uh, we are seeing a great future together. So we are we are specializing in corporate governance. So this means that that everything to do with corporate governance, whether it is enterprise risk management, business continuity, compliance management, health and safety, and we are actually certified in 17 other, or in total 70 management systems or ISO standards that we can, that we are working with. You will see at the bottom that we are a platinum partner of the PECB. Now the PECB is the, the Professional Evaluation Certification Board that is based in Canada. And this is our certification body that we are working with. And um, just, to, just to give you context about the platinum partnership there, the PECB has got 1,844 accredited partners. Only 29 of them has got platinum partnership status. And we were number 23 in this whole process. So we are very proud of, of our status with the PCB. They are deployed in 150 countries. So we will be um, soon there as well. If you're looking at our, our eight offerings, we, we, are, we are conducting training, we are doing advisory services, we are doing audits. Um, we've got products, products that we are, are selling into the market as well. We've got technology, the, the technology that we are speaking about. Um, this one now, at the moment, we've got incubation. Now, if people um, don't know what is incubation processes, if you're looking at a, at a, at a baby that has been born, where, where, where do they 
put that baby in an incubator. So we are doing exactly the same in, in, in actually taking C-suite uh, managers and put them into an incubator and actually drive them um, to be executives wherever they want to be executives. Executives, um, CEOs are actually a very, I want to say it is a very lonely space um, because you cannot speak to your, to your subordinates. Firstly, you, you, you can also not speak to the board um, uh, about your challenges. So if you're looking, looking at um, executives to have a safe space is actually a very challenging um, environment. And then if you're looking at, um, we are, we're also doing a business incubation where we are taking a business from where they are and driving them into, into different space. Then um, events, we are doing that as well. And then international certification. This is our flagship where we are actually certifying um, uh, people, products, management systems, training organizations, trainers, and auditors. So what is Isolytics? Now, I just want to explain to you quickly. Isolytics is a, is, is a, uh, a modular system that we have actually built um, to be including GRC, that, that is governance, risk, and compliance, combined assurance. We've got an incident and investigation management system um, that, is, that is, I want to say, that is new age. Um, it is, it, is um, it can do fantastic things. We've got the Bowtie XP that, that we will be speaking about now uh, that, that we've incorporated into our system. We've got enterprise management. We are working specifically uh, with ISO integrated management systems. We've got a mobile system that we are working with, checklists, compliance, surveys, and then everything is driven by artificial intelligence and machine learning, and that creates the, the, um, the backbone of this. So Isolytics is a system that has been um, built in partnership with um, Chris Advisor Africa, as well as um, one of our leading universities in South Africa. And we are, we are measuring the health and maturity of management systems, and we are driving combined assurance. Combined assurance is actually, if you're talking about um, continuous improvement, combined assurance is a critical component of combined assurance. Um, because every company wants to have all the departments working on a certain level to perform on a certain level to make sure that the company is healthy overall and and that you don't have one component or, or one department that is that is driving excellence and working in, in a performance space of 95 percent but another one um, is sitting and they are functioning on a 45 percent etc this is at, on on an average then about 60 percent um, um, health and maturity so we are dri driving a return on investment. So the investment that, that people are making into, into our system is paid off within the, next, within the first three to four months. Um, so out of Isolytics, we are pr providing combined assurance. It serves as a repository for evidence. Um, measure, it, we are also measuring the level of, of risk and the level of assurance. Now, if you, if you, if you are having fairly knowledge about um, risk management, it is always there's always a question: What kind of assurance do I provide to management? What assurance do I provide to the executive levels? And the question is: How do you how do you measure the level of assurance? Now, the level of assurance is a critical part of this whole process for us. And then we enable continuous auditing of risks across the various management systems. Um, the key characteristics of Isolytics is that we've got a single sign-on um, that if you're working with I2MS, that is our instant system, you sign on through Isolytics. If you're working with, with surveys, with checklists, with everything, you've got one specific sign-on um, that you don't, don't have to remember 13, 14 um, sign-ons. We can create role-based permissions for escalations and notifications. Um, we are segregating information for, for different users um, to, to ensure input and the review process. We store sens sensitive data in country, so we have to comply with the GDPR. Um, we are speaking about POPI or POPIA, as well as the new standard that is actually uh, the performance information management system, uh, sorry, personal information management system that is ISO 27701. And 
all the reports that, that, that we've got on the system can be extracted and imported, um, whether it is in Word, Excel, or PDF. And we are working with APIs. Now, now APIs has got the ability to pull in uh, to pull in and transform data from other systems. And this is what, what we've got there. And then visualization is actually the, the buzzword that, that we are speaking about. And visualization makes it that we've got dynamic dashboarding that we are working with. It is, a mod, it is a modular approach, so you don't have to buy the whole system. You can buy module by module uh, in terms of what is your needs. And then you can build your own interconnected dynamic isolated system out of our software. So if you're taking this, this now further, then you will see that, um, sorry, I just want to close that one. It's not supposed to be, to be there. All right. Okay, so isolytics, um, the bow tie, um, visual risk assessment process. If you're looking at bow tie, bow tie um, for for people that is that that doesn't know uh, the various methodologies of um, of risk assessments. Risk assessments is actually defined in um, in ISO 31010. Um, they, there was a 31,010 um, issue uh, of 2009, and there's a new one that has been issued last year in 2019. So in the first one, there were actually um, 22 methodologies. Um, in the new one uh, that was is issued last year, there was a lot of, um, I, I think we're sitting here on about 70, 80 met methodologies, and one of them that is actually coming uh, or that is being used in, um, in the identification of risk, in the analysis of risk, and in the evaluation of risk is actually the bow tie. Every way that, that you can actually work with, with, um, with the whole overall process of risk assessment. And, and just to define risk assessment, risk assessment is the overall process of risk identification, risk analysis, and risk evaluation. So if looking at, at this, um, just to come back to ISO 31010, it is giving you a fantastic analysis of what needs to be done there. And then it enables you to easily create bow tie risk diagrams and the bow tie XP is unique in its ability to visualize complex risks in a way that, that is understandable, um, yet it also that allows for detailed risk-based improvement plans. I want to explain to you the eight steps that, that the bow tie methodology is actually working with. And this is as simple as this. So if you're looking at the eight steps, it is actually, the eight steps is, is firstly, do you have a hazard or a risk? What is your top event of the risk itself? And you can see here on, um, I just want to get my pointer right. So you can see here that this is actually your risk and your, your top event. And then we are, we are speaking about your threats or your causes that is on your, your left hand side. And then we are speaking on your consequences that is actually um, on your right hand side. side. So if you're looking at, at um, your barriers, your barriers is actually your controls. So this is your, your controls as a preventative control. And then we, we have got it on the right hand side with the consequences as a recovery control. How do you recover if, they, if you are actually planning for or plan, um, having a risk of oil spillage into, into the river, and you, you, you've got all these preventative measures in place, and uh, that event or, or that risk materializes where you are actually spilling oil into water, how do you cover from that to actually build, bring back these consequences back again to your top event that you can always um, actually work on a preventative methodology. And then your escalation factors. Um, escalation factors is actually where you are speaking about, um, um, where you, you are speaking about um, power interruptions or disruptions that you have got then a generator that you are speaking about. Maybe that, that one is um, a power cut your generator is there, but for your, your generator, it needs to be serviced. 
it needs to have diesel it, or fuel. It needs to have a propellant that is actually working there. So everything that 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 you've that you've got um, in the bow tie is actually as simple as eight simple steps. So if you're looking at the con the effectiveness of of the controls in your um, in your bow tie meth methodology, you will see there that your your effectiveness of each barrier can be measured, and it can be measured in terms of um, poor, good, very good, um, good, and and then overall out of the system, we can actually determine what is the control effectiveness, um, or as you can see there with with this abbreviation there, ICE is actually what is your internal control effectiveness measurement, and we can determine that as well as if you're looking at the criticality of each barrier. Now, if you're looking at business continuity, if you're looking at risk management, if you're looking at quality management, safety management, everywhere they, every every management system has got critical controls. They're calling that actually in um, ISO 31010, HACCPs, that is actually your hazard critical control points. Uh, if you take out the hazards and you, and you are just got concentrating on what is your critical control points, your CCPs, you will see immediately that a specific control, possibly a person or um, infrastructure or technology or system, that is a critical control and, and you can measure this as well on the system. So if you're looking at how, what, what is the consequence, the, the consequences that you've got and how you can actually go and rate it. So if you're look at, looking at this part of, of um, the bow tie methodology, we are measuring, we can measure 16 different matrices there. So whether it is people, environment, health and safety, um, um, uh, your reputation, you, you, can, you can name it, we can put it in there and you can build for yourself with your yeah, assets, etc., and you can build this matrix according to what is adopted by your risk management pro, uh, um, uh, framework, and it can be aligned exactly with that. And I will show you the simplicity, what you've got there. And then your risks are actually lying there, as well as you can see um, your traffic light methodology there, um, the yellow, green, and red. And also the bow tie has got a root cause analysis. So the root cause analysis instant timeline is actually determining for you when is when did the the incident started to happen. And we can guarantee you if if you're if you're looking at whether it is crime, whether it is it is it is a an aviation accident, they 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 are always indicators or actually markers. Um, in, in your in your timeline, where, where you can see, did a person fail? Did a process fail? Did um, uh, a, um, a procedure fail? Did a tool fail or did a technology fail? So we, we're calling that increase the P square is T square methodology. So we are testing actually in all these things here on, on the left hand side. It is actually measured against the P square is T square methodology, whether it is a person, whether, whether it's a process, or a system, or a tool, or technology. And where you can see that the incident happened here, at this specific time, you will see that, that, that something else has happened maybe a day prior, or three hours prior, where there was a failure in any of these controls. Because each of these controls that you've got is costing money. Each of these controls that you've got, you can allocate um, a financial cost to it. And every control must actually then work to the greater good of the company. Um, so if you're looking at, at the system itself, I'm going to, to demo it. So, so, so I'm just going to go out of, um, out of the presentation and then I will be um, going into the system itself. So if you're looking at the system, just gonna share it quickly again. So if you're looking at the system, it's a simple methodology. You can see here that if you if you look at if you look at this, you will see that there's 
uh, exactly what I have, I have explained to you, but I, I am going to take a simple example. And we, we've got a, a pre-populated example here of, um, of driving a vehicle. So driving a vehicle, if you look at risk management, your course must actually affect your, your objective and your objective um, must actually go over into a consequence. Now, if you're looking, looking at, at losing control, this is actually on a mine uh, that we've been, been working with uh, to do with driving of vehicles, especially um, these big yellow trucks um, that, that you can actually see what is happening there if, what, how can a person lose control over a vehicle and what is the consequences there? So what is the causes? The causes can be in, um, an intoxicated driver, it can be, can be a driver's loss of attention due to a cell phone, due to um, the radio, fatigue, etc. It can be due to a blowout of a tire. It can be unexpected maneuvering um, of another vehicle. It can be slippery roads, uneven surfaces, poor visibility. Now, if we're taking one of these and we're saying there was a blowout of a tire, I'm losing control over my, my, my vehicle. What is my consequence? My consequences are I can crash into another vehicle or a motionless um, object. Secondly, I've got a driver impact, impacts on uh, of the internal vehicle, hitting a pedestrian, crashing into, into water, uh, or the vehicle can roll over. So if you're going just, just to go one level further, you will actually see what, what, is, the, what is the actual beauty and, vi and the strength of the Bowtie methodology. Now the Bowtie methodology is actually now integrated into, into a, few, a few methodologies. If you're looking at risk identification, you are actually sitting with the first methodology that you are using is firstly brainstorming. So the brainstorming that, that you are using is actually giving you a lot of information that you have to go and plot somewhere on a canvas. The second one that you can have is, um, um, is checklist. The third one is you can have surveys. The fourth one is you can have this bow tie methodology where you are actually looking at and built into this one is actually also the layers of protection approach, LOPA. Now, if you're looking at, at each one of these causes, this course has got four barriers, four barriers or four controls. This means that if there's an intoxicated driver, each one of these controls is actually 25% uh, worth. So if one fails, there's still a 75% barrier for, for this driver to lose control over the vehicle and to have this kind of effect there. The second one, the second one here, you, you can see they, there's only one. There's only one barrier. And that barrier is actually a single point of failure. If you, if you speak about business continuity, Business continuity stipulates that if there's only one single barrier or one single person and that person, something happened to that person, you are actually sitting with nothing. So you need to actually build in uh, succession plans and, and a plan B, a plan C, etc. And this is what, what we are speaking here about. This blowout of a tire has got six, or sorry, no, it's five. It's five controls. So each of these controls has got a 20% value. And if one falls, you, you have still got 80% assurance that you will not lose control over the vehicle. And we can go through each one of these. This one has got a 50-50%. Um, now, if you look on the right-hand side, the right-hand side is giving you the recovery controls. And if you're looking, looking at these, this is also your layers of protection approach. So it gives you three levels there, and then you've got single points of failure. And these single points of failure should actually be immediately a flag that you, that you, that you are working with and that you need to be looking at. So, and, um, so if we go to, to each, of, each of these, you can see that we can risk rate each of, each of these controls, um, each of the, these consequences, and, and it is as, as easy as I am saying that it is possible, there's a major injury, it, it is a C3, and I can see, I can formulate that myself, and I can build it in there. Now I have rated people. The second one that I'm going to rate is assets. You can see that they're on top, 
I'm looking at my assets. I'm saying it is, it is very possible that um, my assets, my people, um, or um, my vehicles or something can be damaged, localized or major damage. It's very possible they, I, can, I can plot that and there's your changes. And all of these changes are actually going back to our reporting system that I will show you a bit later there. So um, all, of, all of these, you can risk rate it in every, every um, I want to say, risk category that you want to actually um, do it in. Now, what is nice about this is that we can also audit it. So there's the audit filter. So we can now, with one glance, we can see that we've got greens there. We've got greens there. It was, it was audited um, a few times, and it is also integrated with, with other risks. Um, these, these two ones um, are not very um, strong controls. So now you just have to work on the red ones. And out of this, you can see that there's about six or seven of them. Not much. And you can even see what is happening on your escalation factors. So the lack of appropriate equipment and keep the equipment in stock, that, that, is, that is giving you the assurance that, that you have there. What we also have, have got here is that we can, with a click of a button, say what is critical in this whole process. And then you've got a, a criticality analysis. What is low, what is low, what is high, what is very high. So you can set the criticality standards there and you can actually measure the criticality. Secondly, you can say who, who, is, who is now accountable for each one of these. And there you've got a total accountability record that is visual that everybody can see. What is the control effectiveness of it? Very important because now you've got a visual representation that you can actually say, but look at this one here, very good. Out of this poor, 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 all these poor and very poor on these red ones that we need to actually work on these. And also even on your escalations, you can, you can have a risk rating there, your effectiveness rating there. From this, you can, you can even go to your barrier type. Barrier type, what, what we have got as, as, a, as a management control um, is the P square S, T square system. So we can say it's a people behavioral um, issue that we've got there. It is, it is, a, um, it is passive um, hardware. It is, it is anything that you are defining in your environment that you can actually measure. We can also go to the categories that we've got there and everything that we've got is actually creating for you the assurance that you are actually working with, with a lot of evidence and a lot of uh, information and it, the system is so, is so, is so easy that, that you can actually see the, it is just buttons that, that you have to go and, and select. If you want to, to edit this, you can go and, and edit each one. You can give it a code. You can give it a description there. You can link it to a family there, a barrier type, your effectiveness, accountability, your uh, BRF is uh, your barrier failure code. Uh, the criticality, um, and then, so everything, how it is verified, how it is assured, is actually working in there. And you can see that, that there's a, a lot of uh, functionality within the system. Now, with all of these, the nice thing about this is the visualization, because you can, with, you can engage with people that is actually in the same, same room that is, that, that is sitting that, that is assisting you in doing a risk assessment and you can actually work with with all of these and this is tools that you've got it is tools that you've got to your um that you can actually use to make people understand um how's it going and what do you what do you what do you do there i just want to go to the incident manager as well this is part of the bowtie system so if you're looking looking at the instant management, you will see there that we've got, we've got um, the tripod analysis. I'm not going to go into that. This is a timeline analysis. This is a root cause analysis. This is your barrier failure analysis. 
Um, and this is also very failure analysis. I just want to go to a root cause analysis. With one, anal with one click of a button, you've got a root cause analysis. So this gives you further functionality that you didn't have and that you can actually say, but this is what we are doing with, um, with our environment. You can also, um, with your investigations, you can, you can go and, and determine what is your timeline analysis? What, how is your, is your timeline? And you can see on this one, this one started actually 47 years ago in 1958. This was a plane um, crash um, accident that was analyzed. And you can see it, it, has, it, has, it has started many years ago. And that was actually where, where you need to be looking at what is, what is happening with your P square S T square and how can you actually see um, the, the, the timeline analysis and how does it actually make sense for you? You can see that, that we can export it, export it there to Excel. I'm going to go to, to um, our reporting system here. So anything that, that we've got here, we can, we can, this is our reporting systems. We can have all the actions, all the activities, um, all the audits that we have conducted, all the barrier types, um, we can do that. All the barriers, we can have a report on all the comp competencies, the document links, escalation factors, your hazards, even your LOPA here at the bottom. There's your LOPA. So everything that you need, you are actually building it into the system, and it is as it is as easy as as that. And they, there you've got. A system that is actually opening opening for you and it gives you a risk per page that it is giving you everything that that you need to know um, on excel and that is how quick and simple the system is um, i just want to close this so um, also your incident manager it is it is part and parcel of this whole whole process um, and i just want to see the root cause di diagram we, we have done, uh, your recommendations, this is also part and parcel of this. So your reporting is a strong reporting management system um, within Bowtie. If we're looking at, um, I, I've, been, I've been in this, as I said, uh, since, since 2007, I've been using Bowties. And uh, we've, we have actually started to, to use Bowties on an Excel spreadsheet that looks like this that we have actually built to say that this is, this is our bow tie, this space here, and this is our causes, our consequences, our risk description with the, the, the inherent risk rating here. And how do you actually, I want to see if I have shared that. Um, how, how did you actually, so if you're looking at, at this, you will see that this is our causes, this is our consequences, our inherent risk rating, and then how did you actually work with, um, with your existing controls to address each and every one of your causal factors? And you can link those to your causes. Now you can see here, it's exactly the same what I was actually speaking about in terms of the system. You've got the three levels, you've got the five levels, you've got the layers of, of protection approach on three levels four levels, three levels. This one has got, um, uh, what's it, four, five, six, seven levels. And out of this, you, you can have a measurement of your control effectiveness with an average there. And out of this average, you can actually go and, and say, what is my preventative controls? My preventative controls are actually giving me that kind of factor and, and my residual risk is there. So now you are actually working with your control effectiveness um, and our, um, what we have done, and this is still at certain certain companies that, that we are doing this um, with a with a board um, that we are actually working with this. This is a current one that we have done. You can see they um, we've actually finalized that at the end of January of 2020 um, with this specific client. So just to um, to go back again to to um, our presentation there. So if we're looking at 
at, um, at the bow tie. What is very important is that, is that this webinar is actually giving you access to the isolytic system. The isolytic system is a web, are webinars that we are, um, that we are running on a, um, a daily basis or um, every second day that we are advertising for um, our, our complete system. This is just one part of the isolytic system. So because you are attending this webinar, if you apply to us, we will, we will grant you access for six weeks. Um, you just need to, to complete um, a registration of it, and then we will give you access within 48 hours. So if you, if you want to ask um, us for, for a proof of concept, please feel free, this is available. This is really a fantastic system. Um, I've been exposed in a market to, to a number of systems and we have actually went further than what is actually in a market now. So thank you very much. I think I have used my, my time well. It is now 20 to 3, 15, 14. So I'm going to ask Gillian um, if there's any questions that we need to, to answer. Uh, Nikun, no questions came through on the chat, but I think we can just open the floor and just find out if there's any questions from anyone. Hendrik, please give us a question. Um, while you were talking, I was thinking about um, um, you will at times have a document that you're working from, and um, how do you link that um, into your into your system, maybe with a hyperlink or something like that? Yes, absolutely. Um, or whatever. Yes, you can link uh, you can link documents to it. You can link um, everything that can be evidence. You can link onto uh, the bow tie. And another point there, um, Hendrik, um, if if you understand how ISO works, every control um, should should be documented, and that document can be attached to that control as proof of of the con yes. that the control exists. Got it. Thanks. Okay. You on? Any questions from you? Welcome here. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I was a bit late. Apologies for that. Yeah. I was just wondering uh, what is important from a risk management perspective is that uh, you, you, you find a mechanism to identify um, what is the uncertainty that's going to prevent you or enhance your ability to meet your objectives. Absolutely. So if as an outcome of this assessment, you get to a residual risk rating of a six, seven, or whatever the situation is. That's correct. And, and, that, and that, of course, is a step in the right direction, but there's a gap still. And you have to translate that into what does it mean for the board meeting their objectives? Absolutely. How do you that, that specific perspective? Yes. Yes, Johan. Um, Johan, I, I, I want to... I want to invite you. Um, I think we've got Monday, Tuesday again, Ilian. We've got a webinar on isolytics. Now, now isolytics, uh, Bowtie is is um, is a strategic partner that we've got from the Netherlands. So um, they they've got clients in South Africa, like the Civil Aviation Authority. They've got clients such as um, Anglo American that they have rolled out at the beers as well. Um, and and uh, so every so, so this this visualization of the bow tie is for us very important with within our scope. But we've got a um, we we have built a system isolytics that we are demo that that we are actually having a webinar about with every um, uh, module or component of it um, during the next two to three weeks. So I would I, I would ask you if you can. Join us there. I will. We will invite you because it is. It is there actually where we have actually went went a bit further. I've been working with boards since. Heck, on the how train was 2007. Um, so I've been I I've been I've been working with them for for the last 13 14 years. And and uh, um, what what we are what we are seeing is exactly what you are saying there. And this is why I was actually I just want to want to go back to that to that Excel spreadsheet. Um, if you're looking at this Excel, Excel spreadsheet, 
you will you will see that that one of the things that that we have actually done if you're looking at at a plain risk register a risk register is is actually a long wide um, document with about 25 columns on it and you cannot actually if a person and and really this is this is about a competency people cannot always work on excel so you need to give them a tool that is guiding them through excel that is actually making it easy and this is where we have we have um, even 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 on a on a simple excel document um, that we have we have actually built this that, that there's a line for for each and every one um, every course every consequence and then you can rate today with your on this one day with with your control effectiveness and out of this you can you can determine what is my my proactive controls what is my reactive controls how strong are they what is my actions that that i need to actually um, implement and that can also be done on the system and then we have got here the three levels there that they're saying this is this is our proactive this is our reactive um, effectiveness and this is our combined effectiveness so now you you can see what is your focus and 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 you can see here that um, all these things here at the bottom all the sheets has to do with with cybercrime with data protection with a regulatory um, environment with the environment itself governance uh, with labor disputes talent management fraud management uh, business continuity etc so all of these are then actually rolled up into a simple spreadsheet that we can actually say this is according to to the bowtie methodology that is that is now on excel that um that num number 12 that is your request management is actually in bad shape in bad shape in the worst shape and uh, and and this was actually a very big eye opener for these guys i've been working with 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 this specific company for um for for since 2016 and uh um, when we implemented the bowtie methodology, it was like they are seeing deeper than what they are, are only looking at when when they've got a risk register in front of them. Because you you need to ask um, these difficult questions. That is actually here. Yeah. What is your actions? And you 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 you've got space. You've got space that you can work in. So, so I, 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 I agree with you. I think bow tie is a very, very powerful mechanism. Um, and and it, its power on, on a system most probably comes out in a case of a, you know, plane crash type of a thing. Where you've got many things and you have to go into a lot of detail. Uh, but the same principles can also apply um, in terms of, of a normal risk assessment, even a, a risk register. Yes, what, I, yes. what I've been doing is instead of, of only looking at con con controls, you know, you look at the risk and then you, you look at your sources and you look at your impact and you spell them out and you look at your, what your controls is, you know, a leading detective and, and so forth. And then everything is in there and then you can find out there's a lot of gaps normally as well and you can see what's the robustness of, of of a assessment uh, in, in a, risk, a risk register. But, but I, I, I fully ag agree with you, but I'm still struggling. And, and you, you said, if my understanding is correct, you, you said you're going to address that next week or sometime in the next yes. one. Your risk rating of seven. You know, what does it mean whether you're going to meet your objectives? You know, that, that's the that, that, and Because and, and, this is typically an issue of, you know, your, your risk rate. You know, you've got a amber red and green and mm. then a board can argue whether something must be in, in in red or in amber and they're missing the, the the point of you know what is the impact on the objective to be to, to, absolutely uh, to consider and i absolutely. think you on Johan, what that what is very in, uh, important there is that risk rating part that you get on your consequences to really see what the impact on various levels of the organization will be what will be the impact on human uh, the, the human factor what will be the impact then on so because it might have a different impact financially might not have a very big impact but on a human factor it might have a very big impact so it actually that makes a difference in in what the impact in total will be 
And I think also the, the fact that you are actually measuring your controls and the effectiveness of your controls and to understand how, the, how does your controls actually bring your consequence down. Um, to be able to scientifically measure that and to see what the impact of that controls really is on, your, on the um, consequence or the, the outcome of the risk. I agree with you, but, but that is normally done, isn't it? It, it? That is part of the process. It should be. It should be, Johan. People are, are sometimes missing the whole point. <laughs> I, I, was, I was working two years ago with a, um, a local municipality in the Free State. Their risk register, strategic risk register for the council, had, I think, 400 risks in it. <laughs> so one of one of one of the risks they sorry that that was really number one and two i can open the whole spreadsheet here really it, it is it was for me funny <laughs> because you are not working with 400 or 500 on a strategic level you are working with 8 9 10 11 12 possibly there mm -hmm. that you can actually focus but some of some, some of those things were the council are not um, are not receiving the invite to the council meeting in time. That is the biggest risk. Yeah. So yeah. They, they, they are missing the, 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 the different levels, what you have spoken about, the operational level, the tactical operational level, the, the op operational tactical level, uh, the tactical strategic and strategic tactical level, they are missing that integration totally. And where the board is then actually starting to be, I want to say, encroaching or, or accepting the operational risks. I am, yeah. I, I, was, I, was, I was an executive with, at the Gaut train for uh, when they were building it as well as when, when um, we were operating it for about three years. So I was, I was always defending, I don't take anybody's risk up a notch if they cannot explain to me and give evidence that they have done everything that they could have done. And then only, I will, I will present it to the ESCO, and then I will present it to the board. Yeah. Otherwise, I am pulling, pulling it down. They need to yeah. actually work on it on the level that is actually allocated to them. Yeah, you could. Just another question as well is uh, this system that, uh, you know, the, this brief look I can see, you can go into a lot of detail, and, and, and really it's a worthwhile, worthwhile one. But, but I. On site value, it doesn't seem to be a, a ERM system. So, so it means that you basically have to link what is done here into a RSA Archer or a metric stream or whatever the case is. I fully agree with you. Uh, Excel is, you, you cannot manage risk on Excel for many, many, many reasons. Uh, and, and even if you've got the capability, but you've got, there's no concurrency control, you know, those type of things. That's correct. Uh, and therefore, you cannot have, on a dynamic basis, you cannot manage your risk based, based on, on that. But, but is my perception right that, that this is not an ERM system? It, it is a system where you can do a lot of things, but you have to have some kind of a conversion uh, and a, to, to get some compatibility to get that information into a, a risk management system. That is correct, Johan. Um, uh, they they have been the bow tie has been uh, has been actually um, being integrated with Cura. It can also be integrated. Um, I know that Barnell has has got um, has got their own um, bow tie, but but it, it it hasn't got near nearly the functionality what this one has got. Um, mm -hmm. Metric stream. I don't think that they've got a um, a bow tie. Um, teammate, I don't think that, that they've got a bow tie. What we have actually done, you, you, can, you can see the system that I, I've got on this, the screen here now, isn't it? Ilian, yes. Yes. thumbs up? Yes. Okay. So what, what we have done is that, is that we have, um, because Chris is actually specializing in, in management systems, whether it is, so we have actually looked at what, what is, what is in, in a company from your health and safety, from your environment, from your security, your business continuity, et cetera. And we have gone and looked what is, what is the, the, the best practice globally. And the best practice is actually, actually documented in a, in, a, in, a, in a framework, whether it is the, um, the framework that is being um, promulgated by ISO, whether it is a framework that is 
that is in in King 4, whether it's a framework that is um, uh, from the IAA, it doesn't matter. Uh, the the I, I I want to say the integrated approach between everything here is actually that if you look at a combined assurance and that roll up of the risk assessment that that is done there, whether it is on on an operational level, tactical level, etc., we can actually uh, integrate it into our system to give you combined assurance. And this combined assurance, you can see here, 18788, this is a security management system, 14,000 is environment, 2301 is business continuity, 45,000 is occupational health and safety. And we can go on to say IT as well, and we can say risk management as well there. So now you, you've, got, you've got six standards that you can e evaluate on exactly the same way, and the impact of the bow tie can, can be cross-functional. Um, so this is what, what I was actually saying that we will, we will demo this um, ne next week. I don't want you, to take too much time on this. John, one. I've got your email address and Hendrik, yours as well. So I will send you guys some information with regards to our next webinars. I would really appreciate it. And, and maybe when we, uh, next week or whenever that webinar is, then see, okay, this dashboard in terms of red, amber and green, Yes. Again, it, it, we need to translate it in terms of what does it mean, what is the storyline associated, you know, to the board, uh, telling the board, you know, whether you're going to meet objectives or not, um, and what great. are the main, main aspects, pro, pro and negative. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, so, see, you can address it then. Eh? Absolutely. Yes. yes. Great. Fantastic. Great. Thank you, Thank everybody. You so Any more questions? Kurs? Are you okay? Hendrik? A second round for you, Hendrik. Are you okay with all, that? All good, thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Guys, thank you. Thank you. For, th thank you, um, Johan and Hendrik. Thank you for the questions. We really appreciate it. Um, these webinars are, 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 not, are, not, are not always just for us to explain what we've got. It is also to have a, dis a dipstick approach in what is happening in, in, the, in the broader um, risk management or environmental management processes globally because you've got you you've got experience we've got experience and our collective experience is just making us much stronger yep great thank you very much and guys and thank girls, you guys guys and girl sorry have <laughs> a lovely day <laughs> you too bye. thank you okay. bye. cheers bye bye, bye. bye.